So last night, last night I was reading the new issue of Stereophile, the March 2020 issue. And among the things I read was this. This is my buddy Herb Riker, his column, Gramophone Dreams. And he referred, to, he, he referred to this quote from Art Dudley, who also writes for Stereo, about listening to Jeffrey Jackson's horn speakers. And the line goes something like this that he was talking about. With this system, it, it disengaged his, his critical brain, his critical reviewer brain, and he could find and hear the humans that were making the music in the recordings. He could say, if you feel their presence. And I read that and I just, I put down the magazine, I stopped reading it and I just, I wanted to just think about that and, 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 and make a video, which is what I'm doing right now. But I've had that experience, but, the, but I didn't use that word, finding the humans in the recording. They were there after all. <laughs> they were there present making the recording in the first place. They were, they were singers after all and they were musicians playing acoustic instruments or possibly electric instruments or electronic instruments. They were there making music and does the hi-fi system, does the headphone, does the system get you there? Can you sense their presence of people making music because most of the time it just sounds like music it's it's a it's a shadow of music it's sort of a, a fleeting glimpse of music but it's not fully present when you listen to most recordings on even really good systems right it, it can sound good in a number of ways but it but you don't have that you can feel the presence of the humans making music in real time now I'm going to make a leap here about using words to describe music. I'm going to make a leap here and talk about this idea of finding the humans in the recording because it's a good, it's a good thought experiment. It's kind of like when I first heard about transparency, which I believe to be hearing through the system back into the session. It's kind of the same thing, but it's different. But that's what basically transparency means. And I think that uh, finding the humans in the recording may be at that same level, right? It's another way of listening, giving your ear something to focus on in the music. And it's kind of a nerdy audiophile thing, I agree. But the thing is, it is about, in some sense, music appreciation. It goes beyond just listening to a great audio system. It is about making that connection to the people that made the recording in the first place. I think that's a really big deal. You know, when you stop and think about it, it's amazing that recordings can sound at all good because, okay, it starts with a singer and people playing acoustic instruments or electric instruments or electronic instruments, but how those sounds are picked up in the first place is with microphones and microphones all have sound. They make a sound with a certain signature and then the microphones are connected to a microphone preamp, which again has its own flavor and signature. And then that signal goes to a recording console and it is equalized and compressed and processed in various ways in the mix. That's why people <laughs> mix records, right? <clears throat> and then after the mix, more decisions are made about the sound of the recording by the mastering engineer. And then there's the production of making an LP from that master or a file or a CD or a stream or what, in whatever form it is. The sound is changing. It, from where it started <laughs> with the singer and the musicians playing to what comes out. And of course, when you get it at home or wherever you listen, then there's your playback system. There is the turntable and the arm and the cartridge and the phono preamp and the preamp and the power amp and the cables and the speakers. And of course, your room. So the fact that you could get to hear the humans after all of that in the recording part and the playback part and your room screwing around with the sound is nothing less than miraculous, right? If you get recordings, if you put a piano in your room, a grand piano in your room with somebody playing a drum kit, it probably wouldn't sound that great, right? So rooms, you know, domestic rooms are not designed for sound reproduction, they're designed for everything else but sound. So everything is a compromise. 
but it works. It does in spite of all of that. When you hear the sound of a system, any system, from another room, let's say in someone's house or at a hi-fi show or something or a dealer, whatever, when you hear the sound of any even halfway decent system from a different room than the, than the one that's playing the music in, it can sound kind of sort of real, right? It can sound closer to that ideal of, oh, there's people playing together in that room. Now, you probably know at some point that it's not, but the, the way that many audiophiles have experienced that, that it can sound really good in terms of really real. It sounds closer to real when you hear it from another room. And I think part of that is you're not looking at all the gear and the speakers and whatever. You're, you're disarmed by the experience of not being able to see the system. That you're, you're making that leap a little easier that you can hear the music and think of it as real. If, of course, the sound of the music from another room is, let's say, uh, a solo piano or a singer-songwriter playing guitar and, and singing, uh, you know, that's easier to accept that that's actually happening in this other room. Now, of course, if it's an orchestra, you know that there's not an orchestra in that room. It's just too big to fit, right? <laughs> it doesn't... So the attempt to accept the illusion is a little harder when you know that that music couldn't fit inside that room, right? So if it's a someone playing, a, you know, a recording of someone playing an acoustic guitar and singing, so, yeah, that sounds good, a little hand percussion. Yeah, the closer it is to being possible in a room makes that illusion easier to accept. Box speakers, even the best of them are too small to let, this, let the music, to let the humans breathe, that the original musicians open up and breathe. It, I, I'm always aware of hearing a box when I'm listening to a box speaker with a tweeter and a mid-range and a woofer on a, on a flat baffle. Uh, it can sound really good, but I think there's a limit to how lifelike a box speaker, I think there's a limit to how real a box speaker can be in terms of its openness. Now, a big panel speaker like a Magnapan that's four or five or six feet tall and has a 48 inch tall tweeter instead of a one inch dome tweeter, it can get much closer to a life size. I'm talking about now you're, you're back in the room with the speakers, right? It can get much closer to life size. And open baffle speakers like the Pure Audio Project speaker I reviewed in 2019 uh, with four 15-inch woofers, uh, yeah, that one also got a lot of that scale right for me. So it was easier to accept the illusion of real music happening in the room. But it, you know, it's complicated it, it, and, 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 and fleeting, the idea of hearing music that sounds so close to real, that you're feeling the human's presence who made that music. When you play you know, a Louis Armstrong record from the 50s or 60s and his voice and his trumpet and over a great system, I, I sometimes do, for, like I said, for fleeting glimpses of time, I get there, I really do. You know, on some Beatles albums, when it's John, you know, like Julia, singing Julia from the White Album, and it's, 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 it, it's conceivable that John could be there in my room just singing and playing acoustic guitar. Ah, I live for that in my audiophile life. I absolutely do. So feeling, the, feeling and finding the humans in the recordings, that's what this is all about. And I want to hear from you guys about your experiences. Is Basically, have you, have you heard that? Have you felt that? Have you felt that presence? That's it. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show coming up five days a week right now, and which is one day more a week than the other daily show on Comedy Central, by the way, which is four days a week. Um, what else? Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. You can check me out on Instagram at steve.guttenberg. And of course, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you like the video, share them, um, blah, blah, blah. Give them thumbs up when they deserve it. I would very much appreciate that. 
If you want more, check out my Patreon at P A T R E O N dot com slash audiophiliac. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye bye.